our first entrepreneur has spent the last couple of years leading a double life. Teacher by day, startup businessman after 3.30. I'm passionate about the business. I'm also passionate about teaching as well. Obviously, the dragons are a little bit better behaved than school children, just a little bit, though. Uh, although I may have to ask them to straighten up their ties and sit up straight. And there's one particular dragon Kevin thinks is first class. The dragon that I'd really love to work with is Tuka Sullivan. Uh, he's got a background in kind of the menswear business, and I think he would understand our audience and what we're trying to achieve. But can he convince the investors his business is worthy of their cash? Hello, dragons. My name is Kevin Moore, and I am the director of Comb and Blades. We are an online men's grooming retailer, and we specialise in the sale of traditional grooming products, including hair pomades, wet shaving products, and beard and moustache care products. I came up with the idea for the business as I found it difficult to get hold of products that I liked from the USA, and I'd often have to pay large shipping charges and taxes, uh, which would make the product very, very expensive. I'm here today to ask for an investment of £45,000 in return for a 15% equity stake. Our total turnover for the last two years was just over £50,000 from around 4,000 sales. And this was with a starting budget of just £1,500. I believe the business has tremendous potential in both retail and wholesale markets. The reason we're seeking extra investment is to allow us to target that wholesale market and bring in more stock. Thank you for your time, Dragons. I'd be happy to answer any questions. OK. Mail order preening products is the business on offer from moonlighting teacher Kevin Moore. These seem lovely. The dapper entrepreneur needs £45,000 to take his business wholesale. In return, he'll give away 15%. Well, Kevin, can I compliment you on the way that you dress? Thank you very much. I like your socks, Peter. They're, they're, they're excellent, too. Oh, <laughs> go on, oh, come on. <laughs> First impressions count. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. With the flattery out of the way, fashion giant Tuka Suleiman wants to set the trend with the questions. Describe what each one of these products do, because they're very... Um, they're not familiar. They're, yep. they're all American. Yeah, many of them are American. There are some Australian so brands. Just give us an idea of... Three or four of the products. The majority of what we sell are water-based pomades. Now, pomade traditionally was what people might have used in the 50s to get the slicked back look. And as you can see, they come in lots of weird and wonderful brands, um, and there's sort of quite a culture around them as well in terms of the customers that buy them. And you want the investment yeah. so that you can wholesale this? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And you say that the business at the moment is only online. Uh, it, it is just online, yes. And you've turned over £45,000 over three years? 50000 over two years. Uh, 50000 Yes. Sorry. Break it down over the two years. Yep. Year one, the turnover was 30000 Yep. Uh, gross profit from that was just over 5000 yep. uh, And the net was slightly under, so minus 100. Uh, the second year, um, the turnover was less at 20 k but the profit was better at seven, uh, with a net profit of around £1,500. Well, it, it's very apparent that um, it's a small business. Yeah, of course, and I wouldn't yeah. deny that. But surely, with a turnover of £20,000, I mean, I'm assuming you do something else at the same time. Yes, I do. So, my background is uh, in education. So, I've been a teacher for the last seven years, uh, and I've combined full-time teaching uh, with establishing the business. What do you teach, Kevin? Oh, that was my <laughs> question! No! I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Go on. What do you teach and how old? I teach IT and computing, um, and it's secondary school. OK, so there's quite a lot of credibility tied up in this whole pitch, then, isn't there? If you, Absolutely, you... yeah. If, if my students are watching, uh, yeah, they won't let me off lightly if I make <laughs> exactly. any big mistakes. So, yeah. But, Kevin, who would you respect? You can't expect me to invest in the business where you dip your toes in as and when you've got an hour here at lunch break or in the evening. I mean, it's really not a business. Okay, I, mean, I, I don't see it like that. Um, I mean, I invested £8,000 of my own money, yeah. which um, I borrowed from my wedding fund, 
so I'm not sure that my, uh, my wife's too happy about that. Um, so, you know, I've made a commitment myself. Uh, but teaching's a tough job, but I do work hard to make the business work. Nobody's doubting you don't work hard. Yeah. All I'm trying to say is you want to enter an arena of wholesale that just needs full-time people to run a business. A reality check for the entrepreneur as his preferred dragon doubts his ability to head up a company and hold down a day job. Now, internet mogul Nick Jenkins wants to learn about Kevin's plans to upscale his business from website to warehouse. You're a classic example of how it's perfectly possible using the internet, um, and a wonderful example to your pupils, uh, of, of how it's possible to set up a website, access a whole load of fanatics of a particular thing, and using paid for search and all sorts of different forms of online marketing, you can develop a business yeah. while still holding down a full-time job, which is pretty amazing. The moment you go into wholesale, that's the point at which you're pretty much going to have to give up the day job. Yeah. And the question you have to ask yourself is, are you really sure you want to give up your day job? I hope you'll understand that, I, to be fair to my employer and to my students, I'm not sure I could sort of commit and say yes right now. I think realistically, if the business was making a significant amount of money um, and I felt that it could grow, then that is a decision that I would have to make and I would have to think about very carefully. I actually think the scale of the opportunity is always going to be determined by the effort and focus of the individual that's founded the company, and that's you. But I don't think you can do both. Concerns that Kevin's teaching career may conflict with the running of his business overshadow proceedings again. And Deborah Meaden's been doing the maths on Kevin's sales. I can't ignore the fact that actually we're going south here. You know, there's no demonstration of profit. In fact, it's gone down. Yeah. With, with regards to the figures, I know that the turnover did go down as a result of us focusing more on the website, but the gross profit and the net profit went up in the yeah, second year. I know, it's, really. I know it's small margins, and we're a small business. I think we've got a good concept. Um, I think in this industry, people buy into stories and people, and I think there is a big audience out there for what we sell. It's just bringing us in touch with them. There is a big audience. You are bang on what's going on, aren't you? You know, yeah. I mean, everyone's looking very smart. They're very well groomed, you know, and at some point into the future, everybody's going to change that. They're going to do exactly the opposite because that's what we do as human beings. So, you know, how are you going to protect yourself into the future if the market, when the market swings against you? Well, I think the key thing is with the, with the name, Coleman Blade, you know, we are still selling traditional shaving products. You know, at the moment, the, you know, beards and moustaches are very much in fashion. You would hope if, if that fashion fades, that people are then turning to shaving. So I would hope that we have enough of a product offering that we can adapt and move, you know, without losing our core brand, that we can still attract new customers. Top marks for Kevin, as he demonstrates a business that can move with the times. But for Nick Jenkins, there are question marks over whether the brand's ethos will survive as the business scales. You said it's about, you know, it's a, it's a great story that people want to buy into. The moment you go into wholesale, the person who's at the other end of that chain, they don't know who you are because they're, yeah. they're not connected with you at all. Mm. So that story gets, gets lost, at which point you're just part of a supply chain. Yeah. That's pretty dull. So, so from that point of view, I would love to see you use this as a case study for years to come uh, and inspiring people. So for that reason, I wish you all the best of luck, but I'm out. Nick Jenkins' concerns over the entrepreneur's expansion plans lead to his exit from the deal. And now, that troublesome subject of Kevin's teaching career is back on the agenda. I honestly think that you coming in here and getting investment is such a conflict. And, and I think that's on both sides, actually. Mm. I think the conflict for me, if I was to invest in you, would be, but he loves his job. And I'm not going to be that person to say, leave your job, mm. because actually I've invested in this business and I need you completely focused on it because you are the ambassador, you're the person who's going to drive it. And at the same time, in no circumstances is somebody going to invest in you on a part-time basis. It's just not going to happen. I'm not going to invest, so I'm out. OK, thank you. You're a teacher, you present well. 
But actually, I can't tell you how many of these barber shops are springing up all over yeah. the place, you know, and, and in a minute, it's actually the market's going to move against them. So I, you know, for no other reason, because you have presented very well, Thank you. Um, you know, and as an ambassador for your brand, spot on, absolutely. I won't be investing, Kevin. Okay. I'm out. Appreciate your advice. Thank you. I, I don't know what more could be said. I, I think that the last thing you want is my money and me or one of my team calling you at half past two saying, we're hearing orders didn't go out yesterday. What on earth is going on? Yeah. And you're sitting there in talking assembly. in a separate <laughs> environment with your kids and doing what you have chosen yeah. to do as your career. That's my issue. Um, but you've demonstrated that people can set up a business in their spare time and have quite a cool business too. So I wish you the best of luck, um, but I can't invest for those reasons and I'm out. With Peter Jones declining the deal, fashion powerhouse Tuka Suleiman is the last dragon standing. Will he decide that Kevin's grooming products are a good addition to his own designer menswear portfolio? Kevin, um, you've had a lot of good things said to you. Yes. Yes? Yep. I'm going to tell you what I think. OK. I hate it. OK. And the reason why I hate it, we have some amazing English brands. Mm -hmm. There's Trumpers in German Street. The Americans, the French, they queue up outside to buy English products. Yeah. I do know their exports are phenomenal. And I'm surprised that you're trying to bring product which it doesn't look authentic it just looks like shoe polish and to me to me you know it just looks ugh. i use hair products from german street and the fact is when i go into that store i get that english feeling of there's your paste there, there, there's your blade there's, everything's all there yeah but your blade's probably made in germany it probably is, but it's the fact is they put it together in such a way. Yeah. You know, you have a great looking website, don't get me wrong, but the product, no way. So, I'm not going to invest in you in amount. OK, thank you for your uh, constructive criticism. OK. And that's the final bell for Kevin's pitch, as Tuka Suleiman proves to be the maverick dragon, bucking the trend with a scathing analysis of his product line. I think it's cool. It's beautiful. Oh, it is. I think it's lovely. It smells, smells like so good, that. yeah. Well, it's four to one, guys. I don't like it. I'm always saying to my students, you know, if you work hard at something, you can achieve something. I still feel that you can run a successful business and combine it with a full-time job. I think other people have proved that. I was honest with them, and I think they were very fair with me. And I take away you know, their advice, if not their money.